Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Make sure you smash up the likes and subscribe. We are here to cover the decisive, definitive deadline day. And I'm covering it early hours in the morning in the UK. Late, this is greatness because Callum Odoi has already sealed and signed his deal for the move to Nottingham Forest with Steve Cooper and obviously Andre Santos out on loan as well. Fabrizio confirmed it. They're here we go given and he is out the door. So it's another name off the roster. Uh, along with Lukaku obviously the day before to Roma we will be covering that Roma versus AC Milan game watch along tonight keep an eye out on this channel notifications on of course I will then be continuing that stream with deadline day shenanigans to the last minute and hour just in case anything happens in the Chelsea um, kind of situation so this kind of video is basically the beginning of the day the early hours of the morning to kind of give you a checklist and things to keep an eye on for what we must do to shrink and trim our squad down to 25 max because Pochettino has always mentioned 22 to 23, 25 is the absolute max and that's even still pushing it a little bit considering there's no European football. So let's go through this. Now fantastic work from Doyle on Twitter, um, link will be in the description for his um, account, very good analyst of goalkeepers in particular, spoke glowingly on Petrovic who have just signed work permit, gone through on the bench against Wimbledon. He's put together this graph that basically depicts our entire squad, 25 man squad. He's got the different shades for best position, can play, and then emergency cover and then injury. Obviously injuries in light red um, or pink. Um, and you can see Fafana and Nkuku in that you know row because of course they can't contribute to the training sessions at the moment. They're injured out until Christmas slash end of the season. So we don't need to include them currently in our thinking in terms of squad size, I guess. But it's something to remember they will be back. Now, the three goalkeepers are, you know, they pick themselves. They're there, Betanelli, Petrovic and Sanchez. Petrovic, a lot of people feel like potentially could um, displace Sanchez by the end of the season. I am none the wiser. I'm looking forward to seeing him whenever he plays. Hopefully in the next round, potentially of the Carabao Cup, we drew against Brighton. Um, we've got Brighton in the third round at home. That's going to be a clash and a half. The script writers have got that spot on. Um, but I, I'm, I'm still happy to play him in that game for sure. Um, you know, I, if people feel like he can dislodge Sanchez, I want to see it. That quality could be there. So he's got great, you know, reviews on shot stopping and his just goalkeeping basics and foundation seem to be having a high potential. I haven't seen him ball playing out from the back. We'll see how that goes. But in terms of the fullbacks, guys, we're overloaded and bloated. Um, the left back position, it's not good. Kukurea stays because currently, at this current moment, his Manchester United move has collapsed. Regulon is going there. Here we go, given on that deal as well. So unless somebody's going to come in with a last gasp winner for Kukurea, Mark Kukurea on 175k a week, um, along with Chilwell, who's on 200, to have those two left backs competing on that kind of money, it just doesn't make any sense, especially when you've got a young, impressive academy graduate in Ian Matson who impressed in pre-season, um, obviously played against Wimbledon there. Haven't played him at left back. I wanted to see him at left back. I had in my preview Ian Matson to play at left back. He didn't play there. He played on the wings. Um, but again, I don't feel like Kukurea is in the plans. He's played zero minutes in the Prem so far this season. Um, and oddly, we started him against Wimbledon. Now, initially, I was quite puzzled, quite confused when I was at the game. I didn't really understand that move. His personal terms were literally agreed with Manchester United. And then also, when that move collapsed, I was starting to think, oh, it was reports flying around potentially that Manchester United have put that deal to the side because he can no longer play in the Carabao Cup. He's cup-tied, so he can't play for them. And on top of that now, but, but, hold on, Matisse, don't get too angry. Manchester United have put a fast one. Last minute, last gasp, they wanted to put a little exit clause in January in the deal. And that was when I started to cool down and think to myself, actually, that's not acceptable on our side. We're not de doing that type of business. There's no way we need to be having an exit clause. Say Luke Shaw and Malassia come back fit in the mid season. They decide to send Kukurea back to us. We're not getting a full year's wages off the books. We're not decreasing the book value by as much as we wanted to. It's not the deal that we wanted to do, you know. So we're already doing a favour by giving them a player that, you know, is better than what they have available currently in Dallow at left back and I don't know, Fernandez I think is another option, a young player that's untried and untested. And it's a direct rival as well. Um the loan fee was also a part of it, which maybe swayed Manchester United away from the deal because Sergio Regulon is a cheaper alternative. There's no loan fee from what I can see in that deal. So again, it saves money for potentially going for Amrabat, who they had a loan deal reportedly rejected um, and they're still pursuing that deal. So 
there's many reasons as to why Manchester United have maybe pulled away from the Cucuredo and the Carabao Cup cup tied situation may not be one it may be a factor you know in Ornstein's report it said it definitely didn't help made the deal more complicated so that's kind of frustrating on our part that we did potentially have a part to play in this deal not going through but it is collapsed it's over it's not happening so we move um so now we've got three left backs right and Matson, yes can be a winger but we've now got four wingers because Cole Palmer comes in Sterling Madaweke and Madrid makes four we don't need five two wingers for, for two spots no European football is just about borderline um, as much competition as any man can handle, even with injuries. So Matson is kind of in the grey area and he's not signed a new contract. His contract runs out in 2024. He, um, West Ham and Burnley are interested, so expect some sort of bid or loan or new contract signed and then he goes out on loan because, of, of course, they're not going to loan him out of one year left. Um, or maybe even a straight sell for pure profit on the books, which would be the worst outcome for me. Um, just keep an eye on Ian Matson's name today because we're very bloated at left back. We're now bloated at wingers. We don't really have a spot for him. So interesting situation. It's also reported that Cole Palmer, they see him as someone that could play right wing. Obviously, we've seen him play left wing against Chelsea in the Cups last season, but they also feel like he can play 10. So that's another position that Ian Matson, again, it, you know, it's not really going to help his, his chances. A lot of Man City fans have been telling me, actually, listen, Cole Palmer is not really able to play 10. You guys know better than me. I have only seen him at wing. I only heard that we thought he may be able to play 10. That's why I mentioned it previously on other shows, but I've never seen him play 10. Um, and Man City fans tell me he's not really ready to play, play 10. Better off the right, cutting in on his left. We obviously have Madoweke. We have Sterling in great form out there. But I know he can play on the left as well. To the same level, we shall see. So wingers, fullbacks, yeah, done. Center back on this list, Humphreys is not here. On this list, Washington is not here. Um, and hudson Adoy is not here, but he's going. So centre-backs is bloated. Um, five centre-backs on this list, and that's without Humphreys. You've obviously got Fafana, but you can take him out. So you've got four. You can go with Colwell, you've got Chalabar, you've got Decisi, and you've got Badia Shill. And, of course, you've got Thiago Silva. So you've actually got way more than necessary. It's actually far more than ever. It's six in total, um, if you're counting everyone. Uh, yeah, this is a sticky one. <laughs> Shit. What do we do here? Humphreys is a simple one to go out on loan. Fair enough. Cool. So even though he's done pretty well when given the opportunity, you can loan him out. Could have even loaned him out earlier. I think there was offers from Swansea, but you can loan him out now, give, it, give him his necessary minutes in development. But even still, you don't need um, this many centre-backs here. You know, Fafana's injured for the season. You don't really need five centre-backs if we're playing a four. This is why Chalaba's linked with a move away to take that down to a four and then obviously Fafana comes back, makes it five. We don't need six. Um, <sighs> Chalabar. Bayern Munich don't have peas. At least they don't have peas for us. They're pulling all of the trees for Paulinho and the money that they're willing to you know, put together for that deal, which is fair enough. They need a holding midfielder next to Kimmich. They're trying to balance it out. Graven Birch has gone to Liverpool and Goretzka is really on the fringes. Um, not very impressive. So they're trying to balance out that team. Two calls, one to the DM. He was linked to Declan Rice earlier in the summer, even though they had no capacity facilities for such things. <laughs> but they're not putting together the money for Chalobah. Now, I've always been of the opinion that I think Chalobah is a good squad player for us to have. I've never really been pushing for him to be sold. I said it earlier in the window. Um, and I think we should be minimum looking for about 35 million for him, considering A, his contract runs out in 2028. B, very versatile, played in across the back line and even DM in previous years when he was a lot younger and see like I said he's of good use to us I think he's done fairly well when he's given the opportunity um, and he, he showed you know that he can he can do a solid job for us so I do believe that he's a good option to have as a third slash fourth centre back um, if everybody's fit now we signed Decisi there is really no need for him to stay and it's put us in a position where now we've got someone who's earning a lot more on the weekly wage obviously cost as well I think it was around what was it 40 million um, or 35 can't remember exactly the fee but the point is now we've purchased somebody on higher wages not astronomical but still there's just no reason to keep Chalaba um, in this situation it's a shame because I do think on the books Chalaba is cheaper and potentially even maybe the similar quality but we're going to see hopefully decides he improves had a bit of a shaky start are we going to get money the best we can hope for is maybe a loan of an obligation um, I can't see Bayern Munich putting up that kind of money right now. Maybe another club in the Premier League will come in a late kind of move for this kind of fee that we're looking for. Like I said, 35 I would want. Clubs seem like they're happy with 25 to 30. Maybe a West Ham, they were interested in Harry Maguire. 
they were looking at a centre back, so we'll have to see. But yeah, that is a situation as well that keep an eye on it, but it's a bit of a mess. So in defence, we're bloated and we need to cut that, trim that. We need to move a couple players on in that in those positions. Kokorea, I have absolutely no idea where he could go. Now in the last position that is really up for question, because maybe you could legislate for keeping Washington, having the Broyer, Jackson, Washington as your three forwards, especially if Brusto is potentially going to AC Milan because Taremi, who was going to go to AC Milan from Porto, that move has collapsed. And apparently AC Milan reportedly have interest in Brusto, who doesn't really look ready to me. I'm pretty happy to part ways. I can see Fofana looks good, you know, from what I've seen. Um, we've got now Broyer coming back. We've got you know Jackson and then potentially we're going to go into the market for Ivan Tony because Win Stanley's a fan so we don't really need Brewster I'm not seeing anything that I'm going to miss out on too much if he does something crazy in the future cool but we we keep it moving I'm happy to to potentially take a, a fee from AC Milan on that front um, and then we spoke about the wingers so it's down to the midfield now and it's down to Gallagher and Gallagher is the one that's being linked with potentially a move away Palmer's just come in like I said could be looked at for that 10 roll. Carney coming back from injury, again, 10 roll, six weeks. In Cuckoo, again, 10 roll. As well as Gallagher started the season, you can't really see a gap for him, a clear role for him um, in the starting 11 for sure. But even on the bench, you know, again, we go back to it. If somebody offers you 50, 55, 50 plus 10 million add ons for somebody that's definitely on your bench, when everybody's fit and even when everybody's not fit there's still quite a lot of depth in these areas now for the 10 slash 8 a lot of options do you take it i personally still take the 50 plus 10 but i am a lot more kind of on gallagher's side of do you know what he desperately wants to stay and i do admire that he has been better i've given him nothing but credit really in the opening fixtures this season i don't want to make it completely sway my judgment as it has for many because it's only a couple of games um, so, you know, there's still much more, you know, time left in the season for ups and downs. So I don't want to just sway with the wind, but I have been very impressed with his improvements, especially, especially with his passing. He's just kept his passing a lot more simpler. His pass completion and accuracy is far higher when you take a look at the statistics. And he just looks a lot more calm and composed and, and a little bit more trustworthy. But the, 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 the question still remains, where's the game time when the likes of Palmer come into the fold, potentially in Cuckoo, Carney, it gets stat pad. I think personally, Gallagher is going regardless, it feels, you know, it's kind of feels inevitable. The club want to make that profit, want to make that sale. I, I'm not against it. I've said it from the get-go. I haven't changed my mind, despite the fact that I'm, you know, if he does stay, I'm not going to be, you know, going crazy um, up in arms because that was only really energy I had for Lukaku. But in terms of Gallagher, it does feel like if he doesn't go this summer, he might go next summer or he might go to, you know, the, the window after. It just feels like regardless of how hard he might try and push, technically they're always going to be striving for more, striving for better. And in this position as well, which is the epicenter in the 10, even in the 8, someone like Enzo if the club have got this persistence to keep finding the best talents and the Brazilians and da da da, and da, da it's going to be hard for them to, to 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 kind of stick with Gallagher long term especially when he's pure profit so we'll have to see in the window Tottenham are interested I don't really want to sell to Tottenham I'm not going to lie to you they never want to do business with us if it's a 60 million 55 plus 5 or something I, I can't refuse that I can't refuse that personally Will Gallagher accept? I highly doubt. The guy captained us against Wimbledon. He had that arm bound around his, you know, around his arm. Shock. <laughs> I don't think he wants to play for Tottenham. I think he's very, very, very proud to play here. Very, very much wanting to stay and compete for his place. Be very aware and clear of any briefings that happen on deadline day where it says that Gallagher is wanting to leave. Bullshit. I'll defend him on that until the cows come home. This guy does not want to leave. So if he does end up leaving, it's because he doesn't feel like he's got a spot or there's a place or really he's just been squeezed out. You know, there's, let's be honest, there's just too many players in this position long term. So you look at, you know, Palace coming from um, Ecuador. I think he's in the Ecuador senior squad at 16. Again, he's going to be floating in this kind of right half space, potentially creator. At some point, Gallagher's going. Do you know what I mean? There's just too much players coming in this area, in this in this position I don't think he can, I mean, you could try like a loft is cheap, but I don't think he's going to be able to, to, to be able to survive all of this up, um, kind of upheaval and, and this movement. So we shall see. But 
yeah, Tottenham, not really the team to want to do business with. And I think the price tag has definitely got to be higher than what it once was. We paid 45 million for Palmer. I do think that's a slight overpay. I would have been more comfortable with the 35 kind of range because of course, you know, if you're talking about making a profit on a player, it's very difficult to, to make a profit on that type of price that we've paid. You've kind of got to hit the ground running or you've got to deliver at some point. Um, but for me personally, like I said, I'd, I'd like to be making more than what we paid for Palmer because Gallagher's got more minutes in the tank, more games in the tank and proven himself um, in the Premier League maybe a bit more despite maybe not having as much potential. So let's see. Let's see how it goes, people. But that is what to look forward to and what is in store in this transfer window. The Nottingham Forest game is tomorrow. So we've got preview to think about on that as well. But I will be there for Roma versus AC Milan. We've got Lukaku. We've got Jose Mourinho. We've got Tomori, we've got Giroud, we've got Pulisic, we've got Loftus-Cheek, we've got Liao. I don't need to tell you that this is going to be fantastic. Either way, we are, we are going to play. So make sure you're there and deadline day, keep an eye on all of these things I've just mentioned. Like I said, it's touch and go. Will we get that squad down to 25? We'll see, we'll see. Um, because like I said, there's Washingtons and there's Humphreys and there's, there's players, a couple of players that are not in this list that make it a little bit more beefy. But we're almost there. There will have to be some 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 deals done. Um, and I'm sure hopefully they will get done. But we shall see. We shall see. Make sure you smash up the likes. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Big up your damn selves. In a bit, people. Peace. Thank you.